I love my camera as much as the next person, but whether you're using a smartphone or a DSLR, the one thing that all cameras struggle with is dynamic range. They just aren't very good at capturing detail in the shadows and the highlights. Well, today, I'm going to share with you a super easy way to make sure that all of your images have rich, shadowy detail and gorgeous highlights. Let's get started. If you'd like to follow along with me, you can download the exercise files in the video description. The process that we'll use in this video is called HDR, which you can use to combine multiple images. Sometimes the lighting makes it difficult to capture all of the details that you'd like in an image. For this technique, it's actually pretty easy. You don't even need to use a tripod. Just hold your hand steady and take a series of images, adjusting the shutter speed or lighting in between each one. Once you have all your images, all you need to do is open Affinity and then go to the top of the screen to File, then New HDR Merge. In this window, press on Add and then you can add in all of the images. Now, as for the settings down here, it will automatically align the images, which is nice since I didn't take these with a tripod. The one extra setting that I need to check on is automatically remove ghosts. Ghosts appear in the image if there are moving objects in the images that you take. In this case, there was actually a car driving down the road, which created some ghosts so I need to check this on. It's not always necessary, but in this case, it's necessary. Then press OK. So now Affinity is going to take these images and combine them so that only the pixels with the most detail remain in the image. So the blown out sky will be replaced with more color and detail, and the rest of the image will remain nice and bright. Take a look at how this looks so far. This is already much better than the original images, but we can make this look even better by adjusting a few of these settings. There are some nice presets over here that you can click through and see if any of these look good for your image. For this video, I'm going to keep it on its natural setting, and then I'm going to show you these manual settings over here, but feel free to use the presets if you'd like. So over here, we have some great sliders to adjust. But before I begin, I just want to warn you that these sliders are extremely sensitive. So be careful not to move them too much. First, we have Tone Compression, which we want to keep up. If I lower this, we begin to lose detail in the sky, and the rest of the image doesn't look very good. So I'm going to keep that set to 100%. Below that, we have Local Contrast, which I definitely want to raise. Now, if you want the classic HDR look, you can really raise this. However, I want this to look a bit more realistic, so I'm going to keep mine around 30%. Next, we can adjust the lighting. I think the lighting is looking pretty good, but I do want to add in some brightness, so I'll go ahead and increase this. I can see that by increasing that brightness, the sky has become a bit too bright. But don't worry, down the road, we can adjust the highlights separately. So I'm going to keep moving down here, and here we have Contrast. Now, this is different from Local Contrast. Local Contrast will focus on smaller areas of the image. This is especially apparent if you watch this wall here. As I increase this Local Contrast, smaller parts of the wall will become darker and lighter next to each other. If I increase this contrast, 
you can see that the whole wall overall just gets darker. This is because this contrast takes a more general look at the image and will add shadows and highlights on a larger scale. I'm going to only increase this slightly because of how powerful this slider is. Under white balance, I'm going to check that on, and I'll increase the temperature slightly to warm it up. Down here, we have shadows and highlights. Now, earlier, I really brightened up the image, which made us lose some detail up in the sky. So I'm going to decrease the highlights layer to bring back some of that sky detail. And that's all I want to do for this image. So once you like how your image is looking, you can go ahead and press apply at the top left. All right, let's take a look at the before and after. Here is the original image that looked the best with the lighting. This is a typical single image with a blown out sky and the whole image looks a bit washed out. And here it is with the final image. Wow, that looks so much better. This is a super easy technique, and I hope that this helps you to take some better photos. If you want to learn our affinity workflow, then check out the free course below.